So strategy mapping is essentially a process for being able to visualise the processes involved in any business. The issues I've always had reading through business plans is that often um, it's an articulation of the thinking of a business but the thinking isn't of sufficient enough quality. So let me give you an example. What, what often happens is that uh, somebody realises that uh, in terms of sales they're going to have to achieve sales of X but they don't work out you know, specifically what needs to happen to generate those sales. So who's going to go and see which customers, how frequently, what the costs are associated with it. And so what strategy mapping is uh, and represents is essentially a way of visualising all of the processes that need to happen within the business to make it a success. So I developed this really because, to be honest, I'm a fairly simple character and, and when I read through business plans and trying to understand how this business actually works, I started sketching them out and then I started thinking, well, yeah, what happens a lot of time is that businesses evolve by default rather than by design and it's those evolutions of, of default rather than design that often land up hamstringing the growth of a business. So really applying some design-led thinking to this very early stage in a very low-tech, very easy to engage with fashion that doesn't cost anything more than a couple of packs of post-it notes and a, and a whiteboard yeah, is, is a great advantage. <laughs> So this is an introduction to the strategy mapping process. Uh, we're going to use an example of an umbrella vending machine company, an example that may be familiar to some of you if you watch the TV show Dragon's Den. Uh, this was pitched on I think series one or two. Um, the business essentially consists of a way of delivering umbrellas to people who've been caught out in the rain. And the way in which uh, we're going to explore this is by um, delivering umbrellas through a um, uh, vending machine, very simple process. Now the strategy mapping uh, approach needs us to start working out right what needs to happen to successfully deliver umbrellas through this vending machine to these people in a way that creates a meaningful and viable sustainable business that makes us money. It's really helpful right from the very very beginning to explore different options and to try and work out which of these different options is going to work best within any particular given market. Essentially it gives you a way of visualizing all of the different options and being able to follow the money through them and work out both from a financial standpoint, from a team standpoint and from an operations standpoint what's going to work best. So a little bit of a sort of simulation of, of the business. Now first of all what needs to happen is that uh, we need to source these umbrellas from somewhere and so we're going to need to find some kind of supplier that's going to get us these umbrellas to put in the vendor machine to go to the customer caught out in the rain. And so what we need to look at next is location. A business model isn't invented, it's discovered. And so yeah, the map really lends itself well to being able to integrate new information to it and to realise how that's going to have a, a ripple effect through the business. The map enables you to say, right, let's explore scenario A. If it's this, then what flows logically from that? If we now change this to B, what logically flows from it? And it enables you to really get, a, get your head around those to make informed decisions or to identify the bits of information that you categorically must get in order to make that informed decision. We need to be able to get some money out of this vending machine to come into our company. So we need to decide who is the customer who's going to sell this to the end user. The map is going to be made up of facts, opinions and guesses and I think it's really important to identify whenever there's conflict in discussing certain points. Um, is this an unequivocal fact or is it somebody's opinion or is it a complete guess? And we need to understand you know, the, the potential ramifications of it being anything but fact. And so you know, it's really about leaving any sort of baggage at the door and the key purpose of creating the map is to make sure that the end product is as accurate and as representative of the facts as possible. Um, understanding that there are always going to be conflicts of opinion and, and some different guesswork in there. When a team's looking at a, a situation or a problem or, or a business, they will get a slightly different perspective on it. And often you see teams sort of disagreeing on little components of the business without necessarily understanding the ramifications. And so being able to focus on not necessarily whether my opinion's right or your opinion's right, but is the map correct? And we better make sure it's as accurate as possible if we're going to make you know, life or death 
you know, decisions for the business um, based on the information. We're going to have to manage the stock within the vending machine. We're also going to have to work out how the machine is serviced and how we make sure that this is all linked up in a way that makes a meaningful, profitable business. The other things you can do is start to work out which is cash in and which is cash out. Well, actually all of this is cash out until you get some kind of money back from this customer. So we can use this to start working out what our cash flow forecast must be, might be like. We can also look at where there are areas where perhaps we hadn't noticed we could generate revenue. So a great example is we've got these vending machines there, we may well be able to generate some revenue from advertising. So yeah, how do we do that? What skill sets do we need within the team to be able to sell the advertising space? Is it you know, print advertising or is it multimedia advertising? If it's multimedia advertising, what's the cost of the unit going into the vending machine? And what's the cost of potential vandalizing of that machine? It gives you a chance to say to sort of stress test the system that will be developed and to design that rather than to allow it to evolve by default. So a whole bunch of different things that we need to think about, but being able to put it out in a map and stare at it and think about each of the nodes on the map uh, and what the implications are is the most valuable part of this process. The other key thing is we could walk anybody into this room now very, very quickly, walk them through this map and they'd have an intimate understanding of the business enough to be able to add value. And that's a key thing. If you hand me the business plan that describes this, it's probably 10 to 20 pages long and it's going to take me the best part of an hour to read through it in any meaningful detail. But in five minutes, we could talk anybody through this and get them to a point where they could start asking valuable and insightful questions in a way that's going to, going to help the business. The reason why this seems to work well is that it gives participants an opportunity to put their own stamp on the output. So this is not pre-printed cards, this is not a pre-framed board, you know, it's very much free form. And so each of the maps will take a radically different look and feel based on the team that creates it. And that has shown to be quite a useful tool because people feel a lot more ownership over that than arranging some pre-printed materials in a way that, that seems to make sense. And so there's a great sense of ownership in the creation of the map, not only in terms of the intellectual input, but also the physical and visual input to it. But it also works well as an iterative document that you continue to use and add. And in fact, when I started off with um, a lot of early stage companies doing this process, what's been great is going back six months later and seeing an iteration or a version of that map still up on the, on the wall in the office with a whole bunch more new detail, new information and how it's morphed and evolved. And that to me is the, the key thing. 